Well, here we are at the beginning of a new year, and I just believe it is a key time, pivotal time. And as we begin this new year, I hope that you are using your faith, that you're believing God for things in your life and in your family, in your church, in your world. Amen. We need to be using our faith. We are supposed to be a people of faith. And, you know, we've kind of, well, not kind of, we've issued that challenge to ask you if you can in some way, uh, in, you know, in your own way to participate in a season of prayer and fasting as we begin this year. And that strengthens and grows our faith so that we can believe God for great things this year. And I just want to challenge you tonight to grow in faith. You know, when Jesus began his ministry, he said, repent and believe the good news. Now, I, you know, there, there's a lot of things, you know, that word repent is loaded. But in that statement he made, you know, he's talking in part about not just repenting of sin, but it's, a, it's changing your mind. It's a, an attitude change. And he says, repent and believe the gospel. And I just want to challenge you tonight that we are supposed to be a faith people, a believing people. And sometimes we need to turn from old natural ways and the carnal mind and become spiritually minded and, and make up our mind we're going to be a people of faith Amen. more than we have been, see, that we grow in faith. The scripture tells us plainly in Ephesians 2, 8, that we are saved by grace through faith. The scripture tells us that we are to live by faith. You know what? It takes faith to really believe that you can be close to God. Hebrews 10, says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. See, without faith, there's no way we find ourselves uh, worthy or, or uh, acceptable to be able to go into the holy of holies. No, it, it's only by faith that that new and living way is open for us. Faith is the key not only to being saved, but to really having a relationship with God. And also so many blessings, so many miracles, so many answered prayers. It, they happen by faith. Galatians 3, 9 says, so those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Those who are of faith. Abraham was blessed because of his faith. And you know what? We are blessed because of our faith along with Abraham. Now, it takes faith to be used of God. And I didn't say that somebody couldn't be in the ministry or do something in the name of the Lord. You know, Jesus talks about some of those people in Matthew chapter 7, those people that call him Lord, Lord, and they say, we did all these, all these things in your name. And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So there's certainly people that do things in the name of the Lord without any faith. But to really and truly be used of God, it takes faith. It takes us relying on God. And some people, you know, they might seem religious. They might seem like good moral people. But did you know that without faith, it's, we're living in sin? Because the Bible says this in Romans 14, 23, whatever is not from faith is sin. Y'all see that, right? Whatever is not from faith is sin. Some of you need to get your Bibles out because you didn't even know that was in there and you need, you need to see it in your own Bible. But tonight, I'm just gonna give you a whole bunch of scripture. Like, I'm just gonna throw these out like this because here's the thing. There's a whole lot of opinions of man about faith. There's a whole lot of false teaching about faith. And what we need is the scripture. In fact, if you just read the things that Jesus says about faith, it, it will open up your eyes to a whole new world. Uh, it will grow your faith. You just read what Jesus says about faith. I, I'm going to say this very plainly. I'm going to say it again later. But Jesus is the original faith preacher. Some of, you, some of you get that, but let me, just, let me just say it this way. I know that when you say faith preacher, that brings up some, um, 
some mental images of certain kinds of people and some weird stuff maybe. And, and I, I just want to tell you, just because, just because some people have gone off the deep end and they've forgotten sound doctrine doesn't mean that faith is not real. Because I can assure you this, Jesus taught and preached faith. Well, we're going to look at a few of those tonight, but we are in a spiritual battle. And this is a battle that's not fought with flesh and blood. It's not won with carnal weapons. No, it's won by faith. Ours is a fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of faith. Faith is how we get victory. It's how we overcome. 1 John 5, 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. There's no other way we're going to overcome the world. It's just faith. We need to always be growing in faith. Surely, the longer we serve the Lord who is faithful, who is good to us every day, love that song. All my life, he's been good to me. I ought to be learning. See, we ought to be learning. We ought to be growing in our faith every day, learning, like the old song says, learn to trust him more. We're just learning every day learning to trust him more, letting our faith grow in the one who never fails us. But the sad truth is, is that some Christians actually seem to go backwards in their faith. It's strange to me, but I, I've seen this and many times over the years where sometimes somebody who's very young in the Lord doesn't know any better than to just believe God for miracles believe God to answer their prayers. And sometimes it is uh, religious teaching and doctrines and opinions of man that tears down their faith and they get to the place where they don't really believe God for those things to happen in their life anymore. And I'm just telling you that it's, it can't just be just time that grows your faith. It's got to be more than that. It has to be something that you're actively uh, pursuing and, and that you desire that in your life, that you want to grow in faith. Some religious people have the attitude that faith is just to accept things as they are. They, they say, well, you know, uh, real faith, they'll say, real faith, real trust in God is, it doesn't matter what it, how it is or what it is, I just, I just accept that, you know, because I'm, I'm trusting God. But I, I want to show you in the scripture that that is not true at all as, as to what faith is. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of, not, of things not seen. It's not accepting things as they are. Just this is what I see and so I just accept that. No, faith is, it says very clearly, it's the substance of things hoped for. It's not accepting what is, it's the substance of things hoped for. It's not just accepting what I see. No, it is evidence of what I can't see. Jesus never taught accept things as they are. He never taught that. You know who did teach that? Their whole mentality about everything, the scribes and Pharisees. They didn't want anything to change. And they never taught faith. They never told anybody, hey, believe God, let's see a miracle. Let's... No, they didn't teach that. Y'all make a connection here with what's going on in, in religious culture today in America. Because there are a whole lot of doubt preachers telling people not to believe stuff. Don't believe the Bible. Those promises aren't for you. My Bible tells me that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. I, I'm just saying, we need, we need to be believing, uh, believing people and growing in our faith. And don't, don't let doubt preachers tear down your faith. That's cheap and easy. It's easy to not believe. I mean, you don't even need to be a Christian to not believe. You don't even need to read the Bible. You can just go through life just like everybody else and not believe. But if we're going to be who God wants us to be in this world, if we're going to see answered prayers, if we're going to see God move and work in our lives, if we're going to see the will of God done on earth as it is in heaven, I'm telling you it takes faith. 
And Jesus, over and over and over again, he talks about faith. The original faith preacher. Mark eleven twenty two to 24. Text of so many faith preachers, their favorite text. Jesus is the one that said this. We need to remember that. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Who said this? Jesus. Has anybody, has this passage of scripture ever been used and abused in ways that it was never intended? I am certain that it has. But it is still truth. It is still the words of our Savior. And it still speaks to us today of how we should be living by faith and seeing miracles happen in our life. Verse 24, he says, Therefore I say to you what things, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. We are to be a faith people. Live by faith. That's what the Bible says. Walk by faith. We are righteous by faith. We are supposed to pray in faith. We're supposed to speak in faith. Again, in, in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus says, If you had faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Who says all this stuff? And I'm just giving you a few of them tonight, actually. I'm telling you, you start reading the Gospels. Jesus talks faith all the time. There were, there were times when he rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith. There were times when he commended people for their faith. Faith was such a big deal to our Savior. Guess what? It still is. That hasn't changed. In fact, it displeases the Lord when we don't have faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 9, so we make it our goal to please him. Now, Paul had this mentality. My goal, my aim in life is to please my Savior. And Hebrews tells us this, without faith, it's impossible to please him. I want to grow in faith. I want to please him more. It pleases him. And my goal is to please him. So I want to be a person of faith. I want to grow in my faith this year. And I realize that this is not religiously correct to say this. And in spite of the, how it might look or sound, I'm not really out to offend anybody. But here it comes. God demands that we have faith. Demands. And Jesus says, have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two. It is not a suggestion. Have faith in God. It's not a good idea. Hey, it would be nice. Have faith in God. He expects us to have faith, to believe. He doesn't tell us to do something we can't do. And I realize that I may, I may hit head on tonight some of these doctrines. And what I'm saying to you is, is if you're here tonight and you disagree with what I'm saying to you, I just challenge you to go to the Scripture and just dig into the Scripture. Forget about what well, I've been taught. You need to dig into the Scripture. Just dig into the scripture. Just keep reading the scripture. Just keep reading what Jesus says. It's amazing how if people just read the Bible and keep reading the Bible. Don't read your four pet verses. Keep reading the Bible. Just read the Bible. It's amazing how it will fix false doctrine. Romans 12, 3. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. See, everybody 
everybody has a measure of faith. And as I said, there were people that Jesus commended for their faith. There were people that had little faith. He rebuked the disciples many times for their lack of faith. One time he said, where is your faith? And, and, and another time he says, how is it that you have no faith? I mean, Jesus talked about faith all the time. To, me, to several, he said things like, be it unto you according to your faith. See, I'm just going to tell you as a pastor, as a preacher, if I said that to people when they're praying about a miracle and I say to them, be it unto you according to their faith, a lot of people would be offended by that. Jesus did that. He expects us to have faith. And every, listen, you see, if he expects us to have faith, if he tells us have faith in God, he's not telling you to do something that you can't do. And what I'm getting at here is there is a false doctrine that some people have it and some people don't. That, well, God gave him faith, but he didn't give it to them. That's not in the Bible. No, what is in the Bible is that God gives to every man the measure of faith. What is in the Bible is that our Savior tells us to have faith. How, how weird would it be for him to, the, to say to the disciples, how is it you have no faith? If it was God who gives it to them, and only God can at his choice give it to them, it's not even up to them. I'm telling you, that's a false doctrine. We have a free will, and one of the ways that we use that free will is our, our Savior, our Lord has given us the ability to, to choose to believe. And listen to me, choose to believe. Faith is not a feeling. It's one of the problems with a lot of people's Christianity is they live by their feelings. It's not a feeling. It is something I choose to believe. I choose to believe the Word of God. See, we're not talking about positive thinking. We're not talking about fantasy faith. We're not talking about you just making up in your mind what you want to believe. We're talking about standing on the promises of God, building your life on the Word of God, taking God at His Word. We all have that measure of faith. And I tell you, people put their faith in all kinds of things. So many people put their trust in money. They put their trust in their own abilities. They put their faith in other people sometimes. We have faith. This is what we choose to believe and what we choose to put our faith in. But Hebrews 11 also tells about many of the great women and men of God in the Scripture and I like to call that Hebrews 11 the, the uh, hall of faith chapter because it lists out so many of these great heroes of faith and tells about the mighty miracles that God did in and through their life because of faith. In Hebrews 11 too, it says it, this, it says, by it the elders obtained a good testimony. If you want a good testimony you got to have faith. And in order to grow in faith, well, you need to know you can. First, I want you to see once more that faith is a choice. It's something that you choose to do. I'm going to go to John 20 and look at 26 through 29. This is after the resurrection. Everybody, anybody ever heard of Doubting Thomas? He's about to become believing Thomas. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. And Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here. Look at my hands. Reach your hand here. Put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Do you think Thomas had a choice when Jesus looks at him and he says, do not be unbelieving, but believing. He has a choice. It's up to him, and Jesus is telling him which way to choose. Choose to be believing, not unbelieving. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's, he's talking about us, right? 
We haven't seen, but yet we believe. Amen. We believe. We are blessed when we take him at his word, even when we haven't seen. Because faith is the evidence of things not seen. Next, Jesus said that some have no faith, some have little faith, and some have great faith. You can also have weak faith or strong faith. Abraham is called the father of faith and the friend of God. God told him when he was 75 that he, that he and his barren wife were going to have a son. 25 years later, it finally happened. In the meantime, Romans 4, 19 and 20, this is talking about Abraham. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Now there's some strong faith. Notice here though, it says, he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in his faith. You see, even in the midst of the trial, even in the midst of that span of time when you're standing and believing God and the time just keeps going by, you can be strengthened in the faith. You can be growing in your faith. Some people don't even believe for God to heal a headache. Some believe for God to heal cancer. Some can't believe God for $10, and some believe God for $100,000. i am just telling you, we can grow our faith. We can get to the place where we believe more. So how does the Bible specifically say, or does it specifically say that you can grow your faith? Well, how about 2 Thessalonians 1.3? We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. I want my faith to grow exceedingly. If their faith can grow exceedingly, so can ours. I want to be one of those that Jesus commends for their faith. So how do we grow in faith? First, we grow in faith by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17 makes that clear. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when it uses the word hearing here, it's not just saying, well, I heard it with the ear, but it's more than that, that we receive it, that we accept it. Because I want to tell you, some people hear the word and they just totally reject it. There's no faith that comes in their heart because they just absolutely reject it. But make no mistake about this. When we hear the word, when we receive it, so you can be reading it yourself. You don't have to hear it with your ear. But however you receive it, however you get it in you, that's how that faith comes. When you know know what God has said, that's how faith comes. And I'm going to say it again. It is not just positive thinking. It's not a fantasy. It's taking God at his word. You know, hearing God say something one time should be enough for us, but I think one of the reasons in our generation we struggle so much is because we have so many negative voices coming at us all the time, and we just need to take the Word of God in at every opportunity to build our, up our faith and grow our faith. F.F. F. Bosworth said, most people eat three hot meals a day, and feed the inward man one cold snack a week. I wonder why they're weak in faith. One thing's for sure. You can't really believe God if you don't know his word. Romans 10, 14 says, How shall they believe in him and whom they have not heard? You see, people who have never heard of Jesus, how can they believe in him? But if you don't, if you don't know what the Bible says about healing, if you don't know what the Bible says about having peace, if you don't know what the Bible says about having victory in some area of your life, how, how are you going to be able to believe? You need to know what God has said because it will bring faith into your heart. But you know, the truth is, is that a lot of the time, it is the teachings of men that tear down people's faith. 
Sometimes in places in the world where people have not really been taught much, it seems that there are more miracles. And I know that, you know, one theory about that is, is that, well, God does those miracles so people get saved. We don't need them here in America. I disagree. I think that it is religious doctrine and teaching that has convinced people, even many, many, many believers, not to believe for anything other than salvation. And sometimes in foreign lands and places where people haven't been taught against it, they don't know any better than just to believe. Like little kids. You know, that's one of the ways I think we need to be like little children, is that we just believe no matter, no matter how it looks or what others might say, we just believe. Mark seven thirteen. Jesus talks about how the religious people made the word of God of no effect through their tradition, which was handed down. And he says, and many such things you do. In that particular passage, Jesus is talking about people not obeying God's word and taking care of their aging parents. But he says, and many such things you do. And I can assure you that that principle applies to many such things where they take the teachings of men and they undermine, they tear down the scripture and the word of God. They use worldly arguments and illustration and tear down what the scripture says. That's why I preach the Bible and I I quote so many scriptures because I know that is the only thing that can truly tear down some of those false doctrines. It's the word of God. You know, one of the things that's so disgusting to me about doubt preachers is they always try to play themselves off as intellectuals. You know, those, those faith people, they're just dumb. If you really knew how to study the Bible like I do, then you wouldn't believe all that stuff. I believe the things that Jesus said. And man, he talked about faith a lot. I want to grow my faith. If you want to grow in your faith, stay in the word of God. Don't listen to people that say, God doesn't do that anymore. Show me that verse. It's not in there. They talk about cessation. The tongue shall cease and the prophecies are going to end. Listen, he's talking about when we get to heaven, when we see him face to face. You read the rest of the passage. Don't pull a phrase out of the Bible. Read the rest of the passage. He says knowledge will cease. Has knowledge ceased? No, when we get to heaven, there's not going to be a need for tongues or prophecy or knowledge. We're going to know even as we are known. Don't let people tell you that stuff. Read the Bible for yourself. It's so powerful. Speak it out of your own mouth. Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain and don't doubt, it will obey you. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.13. He says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Now this is powerful. When you truly believe what God has said, and you speak it out of your mouth. And I want to tell you, it will grow your faith. When it's coming out of your own mouth, and you're, you're believing that in your heart, it's just going to continue to grow your faith. What did he say? I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. You need to start speaking the word of God out of your mouth. You need to quote the scripture You need to be saying it out of your mouth. Listen, I I, I realize that this sounds kind of weird to some people. You need to be speaking the word of God. It is powerful. And when you speak it in faith, what do you say? If 
you won't doubt in your heart, he's going to have whatever he says. See, we need that growing our faith. And man, when you, when you speak it out of your own mouth, it will grow your faith. One of the things that we see so powerfully in the scripture is that God spoke to people personally and they believed. And I want to encourage you tonight, we need to hear his voice. When he speaks to us personally and then we act on it in faith, I tell you, it grows your faith. When you hear God, when you know God spoke to me about this, that will grow your faith. You know, when God warned Noah about the flood and told him to build a boat, and he did it, (laughs) the next key to growing your faith is we need to act on faith. You see, we see so many of these in the Bible, when God spoke to them, they acted on it. Faith without works is dead. James 2.26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. See, faith is dead until it's acted on. Acted on. So if you want to grow your faith, you got to act on the word. You got it. When you hear the word, you act on it. You obey it. You do what it says. You can't ignore it. You can't just put it on a shelf. Faith isn't just this nice feeling. No, it's something that you do. You make a choice to believe, and without works, in other words, if you if there's not any action to it, if you don't follow it up with the way you live and the choices you make, it's not real. But when you do that, it grows your faith. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith, not by sight. Too many people want to stay in the comfort zone, play it safe. And I want you to hear me now. I'm not talking about being foolish. But it is never foolish to take God at his word and trust him. I've seen people do some harebrained things, just some weird, goofy idea they came up with and called it faith. But when you're obeying God, when you're living according to the Scripture, I'm telling you, it's never foolish. And we need to be willing to get out of that comfort zone. Some people never really use their faith unless they're backed in a corner. They've got no other choice. We need to be proactive with our faith. The problem with waiting until you're backed into a corner, if that's the only time you ever use your faith, you're not going to have much faith. You need to be growing your faith, believing God, seeing God move and work in your life, praying for others. Amen. I mean, if you don't have something to... Apply your faith to, look at the world around you. Because there's a lot of people in need. There's a lot of people. Listen, here's a way you can always apply your faith in your own life. I want to tell you, there's a lot of people that need somebody to minister to them and share the Lord with them. And I want to tell you, if we really believe that God would use us, see, grow your faith, step out there. Y'all remember Peter stepping out of the boat, walking on the water? We need to step out a little more when it comes to ministry sometimes. Be willing to get out of the boat and just trust the Lord. You start sinking, well, just remember, cry out to Jesus. He'll save you just like he did Peter. But what might happen is your neighbor might finally come to church and get saved. Who knows? I'm just telling you, we need to be acting on our faith It will grow your faith. If you don't ever act on it, it's a dead faith. I'm going to close with this passage from Matthew 17. And uh, it just speaks to our time of prayer and fasting. But Matthew 17, beginning in verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. 
And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Wow, that's quite a rebuke, isn't it? And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to him privately and said, Lord, or said, why couldn't we, or why could we not cast it out? And Jesus says, because of your unbelief. Now, we're going to read the rest of it, but you need to understand as we read the rest of it, Jesus is not changing his mind. Jesus didn't misspeak. Everybody on the same page with me? Jesus, Jesus never goofed up. He didn't go, oops, well, that's not really what I meant. Why couldn't they cast him out? He said very plainly, because of your unbelief. That's it. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Their faith was not at a level where they could take on that particular demon. He says, because of your unbelief. Now, they had cast out other devils. They had seen God move and work. They were rejoicing even because the devils had to obey them. But now they've come up against one and he says, you're, you're, because of your unbelief. He says, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move and nothing would be impossible to you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, he's not saying, oh, well, it's not because of your unbelief. It's because this only goes out by prayer and fasting. No devil is cast out because of works. Devils are cast out because of faith. And when Jesus says this kind only goes out by prayer and fasting, it is because when we pray and fast, it grows our faith. We get our, we get our old flesh and our carnal mind under subjection and our spirit is strong. I'm telling you, it strengthens your faith. Jesus had a 40-day fast in the wilderness to begin his ministry. He was prayed up, he was fasted up, he was ready for whatever demon came along, but the disciples were not prepared for this one. It was beyond their faith. He said, because of your unbelief. And I'm telling you that it is not a work where if I fast and pray, I'll twist God's arm and get God to do what I want. No, that, that's not right. That, that smacks of the... Prophets of Baal cutting themselves and jumping around trying to get their gods to do something. That is not what moves our God. Faith is what moves our God. And the reason we fast and we pray is because it strengthens our faith. It helps us get to the place where we really believe God. And there are some battles. See, it may not be a demon. It may be a financial need. It might be a physical need. It might be praying for a lost loved one, or a child that's gone the wrong way. There are some battles that just require that, uh, that our faith be at a certain level for us to see that victory won. And we can grow our faith. And I'll just encourage you tonight and challenge you as you begin this year. Make up your mind. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow my faith this year. When I look back at this year, I'm going to be at a different place in my faith and my trust in the Lord. I'm not going to be at the same place. I'm going to grow. Hey, I love you, and I hope that tonight I didn't offend anybody too bad because I want you to, well, give me this. I'm as sincere as I can be. And I really do want to help you. I really do want to see your faith grow. And I, I know I was pretty straightforward about some stuff tonight, but I tell you, it's all right there in the Scripture. And I can say honestly... I always encourage you, go search the scriptures, read the Bible, and especially tonight, I just challenge you to read the gospels and read the things that Jesus says about faith. It's amazing. Stand with me. We're going to pray.